And we are live. Welcome to the stream, everybody. We're live. We're here. We're in the Arca car. We're at Homestead. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Uh, it's been a while since we raced at Homestead. Homestead, from what I remember, was a shit show in that you could really burn up your tires. Um, but we'll see how it goes. That does not bode well for us, chat. Shush your chat. Car is very loose. Car is very loose. This is gonna be a shush show chat. The car is very, very loose, but you know what? We're gonna have to deal with it.
of the session. Sixth place. That's about what we're doing, 43-4. I think uh, top 10 is good for us. We've done like four laps. 33.5 is insane. I think 33.8 is an amazing lap and doable. 33.5 like, holy shit. Holy shit Caleb, what a time. We definitely could have saved a couple of tenths there just for being slightly more aggressive on the throttle, but I played it a little bit safe because I just wanted to have a decent qualifying. Um, I think top 10 is perfect. Damn, I'm a full second of Paul. For the race, this is 35 laps. I think we want to be very, very... Uh, we want to be very, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We want to be very, very cautious. We really want to protect our tires for the first probably 20 laps or so. That's the end of the session, P10. For the first 20 laps or so, we just want to protect the tires.
Yeah, I think your pre-protected tires will be okay, chat. Tenth position. The track temp is 27. The air temp is 25 Celsius. Follow car number zero, a five. Good luck everyone. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck to you too. Come on down if you want to. There goes our race chat.
At least we're gonna hit the wall, so that's the important part.
speed it out, chat. That spin out really fast, because otherwise we'd be starting to catch up to people. Yeah, 
Abrams didn't want to catch it out, mate. Yeah, that guy's a giddy. We're left down. Why are you even doing that? This is stupid.
good race. Play race at one, play job Chris. Yeah, that's around right there again, but I was trying to catch it. Yeah, you had me worried a bit there, so it's hard to my mirrors all the time. Sorry, Zabby. And fast mark, good job. Yeah, this is pretty uh, uneventful. Good race, um, but first good one. This is a pretty uneventful race. Unfortunately, we had a guy spin out in front of us. Uh, uh, we had a guy spin up in front of us. Uh, about lap two. I'm going back to racing 87 to Nashville. At least I can drive the piss out of that. Lap two, we got. Uh, we had a guy just like go off the wall. Fun sound of that, man. Yes. Arc has been been a shit show for me. Yeah. 130. Get ready to do that one next. It's not too bad. It's very loose, but that's kind of homestead. It's very loose, but that's kind of home. So we'll look at the replay now, and I'll show you what happened. Um, and I think I saved tires a little bit too long. That was another mistake I made. Uh, let's save this recap, and we'll look at the replay, and I'll show you basically what happened. I, there is nothing like VR for the immersion. Um, and the best way I could describe it is, it reminds me of wearing a helmet. When I used to like race cars and motorcycles, it reminds me of just wearing a helmet. Wearing the VR. It's not as good for streaming. I, I've been back and forth on whether or not I'm going to switch to a triple monitor setup uh, for for streaming. Because obviously, and, and I've got to tweak the view a little bit too because I think I have to oversize the screen capture in my streaming software to kind of fix the FOB because the FOB is a little bit off. Um, but I don't get sick at all. So I don't have issues with motion sickness with VR. Some first-person shooters do give me motion sickness, but VR at, at all does not give me any motion sickness at all. And you can't honestly beat the immersion. Um, I do have a butt kicker and a few other things that, that make the immersion a little bit better. But, but yeah, I mean, if you don't get sick from it, it's freaking amazing. Um, I do have it turned down a lot uh, because it is a Pimax 8K and I'm on a 2080 Ti. I really need to put a... Uh, I, I really need to upgrade to a 4090 honestly um, so to keep frame rate I have it turned up pretty pretty high well we gained a little bit of safety rating so that's good after Talladega uh, we were top split we lost a little bit of safety rating uh, we honestly we were fast enough to keep up with third that whole time it is overrated it's overpriced too but for VR um, because you're rendering two simultaneous uh, 4k images at least this has this headset is two simultaneous 4k images and two different renders. It's not like rendering uh, at one single render that's uh, oversized, but it's because it's two independent images to get the to get the um, the binocular stuff working. It, it taxes a 2080. My 2080 is capped out. I, I average like in the 30 to 45 frames, depending on on what I'm racing and what track. Um, so yeah, it was a completely. We had we spun out, which didn't help us, but we spun out after we kind of cooked our tires. Um, we ended up a lap down, but we were able to maintain pace with. The leaders with third place basically third place couldn't pull away from us um, I think I saved too much tire yeah I think I saved too much tire I saved tire until about lap 21 or 22 I probably should have pushed the tire a little bit I also didn't get any practice time at all in here so there's that but I mean we weren't gonna catch the leaders but I think we could have easily maintained pace with the top five um, and we saved a lot more tire than 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 five six and seven they they fell off so even with our spin, which kind of cooked our tires, we were still able to maintain speed with them. So I think I could have pushed the tires a little bit harder. And if I hadn't, if we hadn't had that guy crash in front of us, I think we would have been okay. So let's go ahead and look at that recap. Our quality was okay. It was, it was top nine. We qualified top nine. Well, we were top split there, right? Uh, and it's Arca. The thing is in Arca, you really should save tires. Um, I mean, it's a low rating top split, but it was top split. But in Ar in Arca, you kind of in, in Homestead's Homestead's a little bit of a toss up. So Homestead, most of the Arca races saving tires in the long run. Like if you can stay with the top five or six and save tires, a lot of people will overcook it early to hold that first or second or third position, and then they will just drop off in the last like five or ten laps. Homestead is a little bit funky because the car is so loose that you can stay off of the right front by just keeping keeping throttle in. But it's a really, really dangerous balancing act. 
to not to not spin the car. Um. Anyways, let's uh, let's take a look at this. Let's get moving. Come on. Thirty-five laps. All right. Get ready. We're gonna watch the first couple laps here. So I didn't like that I ended up on the outside with cars underneath me um, because I prefer the lower line for tire savings. But so you see that guy right there? So this is basically what, what, what caught me, right? So this guy over here, I see him getting loose and I, I shouldn't have bled off as much speed as I bled off. We'll look at the, the cockpit cam so you, got, so you can see what I saw, okay? So I wasn't trying to push too hard early. If I could have stayed in the top 10, I would have been happy because I, I, I definitely would have, with my tire savings, I would definitely would have top, caught the top, uh, the, you know, I would have gotten three or four positions back just the way they, those people fell off. But, oh, that's way too loud, sorry. I have to move that down to like there. Okay. All right, so. I see this guy creep up and then get sideways, right? And here I'm thinking, Maybe he lets off, maybe maybe he clips a white car. Uh, yeah, I live in California. Maybe he clips a white car, I'm still not sure what's gonna happen here. So he does get turned in front of the white car and now I don't know what's gonna happen, so I get hard on the brakes. And right there, I was worried he was gonna bounce off the wall and come back into me, I got lucky he didn't. Um, but we got so hard on the brakes that we overheated the fronts. And we lost a ton of speed to, to these guys, so we ended up around, uh, I think we were like 13th here. But our front, front right was a little bit hot. And because we lost so many paces, I, I overdrove the car a bit. See, like here I'm not on the gas enough to get the turn in because I went into the turn a little too hot, right? This is a little bit better, but that's still pretty heavy on the right front. So I'm overheating the right front right now. Yeah, it, it's... So quality lap is very different from a race lap. You can run that midline or you can run the low line. I think the midline is faster, honestly, because it's a little safer. The midline is a little safer overall. It just feels more steady. To be fast on that lower line, you have to stay a lot more loose because you need you need the uh, you need the throttle application to get your your rotation in. If that makes any sense. See, like right there, I didn't put throttle in. And I lost the rotation. If you notice how long I had to hold it, because I didn't get a rotation. And I think around here is where uh, where I spun either this lap or the next one. What lap was it? Lap five. Yeah, we're on lap four. It's gonna be the next one. So here we're good, right? You hear that partial throttle application? Nice. Uh, my Dover was a shit show. I was I qualified third. Um, I qualified third. I lost. I had a bad start, so I ended up in six. And then um, right there, I lost it. Right there, I lost it. Let's look back at what happened there and then I'll tell you about what happened to my Dover. See, I didn't catch the spin early enough and so we just oscillated into it. But really what I should have done is I should have stayed. So the reason, no, I didn't touch the wall at all. I didn't touch the wall at all. But here's what happens. I'm gonna, th this, this was made worse. The car is naturally loose here, right? But if you, if you turn out of it just at the right time, the car will kind of just drift out and you use that looseness to get your rotation and get you through the corner and you'll drift out, right? But what happened here is I got a little loose there because I added just a little bit too much power. I went a hair over 
But then if you, you'll hear that I get off of the power, right? And when I get off of the power, right there, I got off of the power completely, right? And when you get off of the power completely, what ends up happening is that the weight shifts back and you don't have a lot of, and you lose control on the front edge because you're already loose. So when that weight shifts back, you lose like steering input and you have less, less steering authority. But Homestead in particular, you cannot overcorrect. If you overcorrect, you will get spun 180 into either wall. And so I did the safe choice, which was just back off and try and save it. But because I backed off, I got light. Not on home, home oh, yes, but Typically, yes, but not on Homestead. Honestly, just, just letting off typically in the Arca, the car will settle. Homestead, Homestead, if you touch the brake, you're more likely to, to, to just make the, make the rotation worse. It's just, it's just, it's just, Homestead is just slick like that. If you, if you hit the brakes, you'll make the rotation worse and you'll get turned hard. You just have to give just enough turn so you don't like overdo it and you have to back out the, the turn in right before the car starts to straighten out. And I didn't, I was a little bit late with it here. So if you notice, right there, you see? You see how I was a little bit late? I needed to come back. Look at the car, the car's going straight, car's going straight. It starts to hook right here. Right here, I needed to be wheel straight. If I was wheel straight here, I would be okay. But you notice my rotation's already coming the other way and my wheels still turn 90 degrees, right? My wheels still turn 90 degrees. So because my wheels still turn 90 degrees, I snap it back the other way and I was done there, right? But essentially that was just, it kept oscillating back and forth and I kept making it worse and worse, right? Because we got loose because of a hair too much throttle, right? Right there I was getting loose, right? And I was coming out and if I had just given it a little bit more to the outside, yeah. And again, it's, Homestead is one of those tracks where it's even worse because you want to be feel loose. Right, you want to feel loose because when you feel loose, you're actually fairly quick. So let's look at this 34.8 lap here to give you an example. Right there, I'm loose. You notice how like I'm just like oscillating on the gas, and I'm almost counter steering there, right? Watch the exit. Watch how I almost counter steer as I exit. Right? Right here, I'm almost counter steering, right? As I exit. And it's even more pronounced than three and four. Because three and four, you drive in really hard. You drag a little bit of brake. And then you want like 50 or 60% throttle. And, it'll, and that rotation will drive you out. And then you want to hold the, the looseness through exit. So because of that, because you're basically using the looseness to rotate, you're like on a very, like to be fast with the low line. This is the problem with the low line, to be fast on the low line because, because you have to trust the looseness on the exit on the low line. That's the thing. Um, but, to, but, the, but you have to be careful with the low line because you can e easily push the right front, right? So if you don't give enough brake on entry and then you, you don't give enough gas, you basically kill your right front on, in Homestead in particular, right? So, so essentially, if you run the low line, thanks for the follow, by the way. Uh, where is Chloe? We'll introduce you to the stream mascot because she gets a puppy treat every time that we get a follow or a subscription. So, um, But yeah, Homestead is just one of those tracks that just tends to be loose. It, it's it's a crap shoot. Oh. Come on, up, up, up. Up, 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 come on. Up, up, up. Come on, hey, up, up, up. Up, there you go. This is Chloe. She's our stream, stream mascot. She's all good, puppers. Um, I like the inside line for saving tire. I think the midline is more consistent. Um. Ah, it's, I live in California, so it's fine. There's no problem there since I live in California. It's a lot better since I'm in California, so. Um, I just, I have to stay out of Florida and Texas. It is what it is. But, um, but yeah, the mid, the midline I feel is easier to drive. I think you can squeeze a little bit more speed out of the, out of the low line. 
and you can save a little bit more tire out of the low line. And eventually you have to move to the high line. Uh, you have to move to the high line because eventually, if you're really pushing, you'll burn out the right front and you just can't maintain that low line. You have to use too much brake to get down low. But, so back to Dover. Dover, Dover, we were having a great race. We were fast. I loved Dover, like Dover just feels good. And we, had, we, we were in third, we got down to six. Third and fourth came together. And, oh no, sorry. Sorry, no, third, third and fourth did come together, but I wasn't involved in that. Fourth, yeah, third, fourth just drove down into, in, into, uh, into third and just turned him on one of the restarts. But prior to that, we got shuffled back to like, I think like eighth. We got shuffled back to like eighth and uh, we were, we we're driving back forward, driving back forward. We got up to seventh and then sixth place in front of us was a 600 I rating uh, person who at one point, in the, they've only been a member for a year. At one point they were 113 I rating. So it explains a lot. But basically what happened was they went in too hot into, uh, they went in too hot into three. They went in too hot into three thought because they went in too hot and, and they didn't have the experience they didn't realize they thought that they thought that the car was rotating down because you know how you you've done dover right so you know how dover as well this was in the trucks by the way but you but dover in particular in the trucks what you're looking for is you're looking for this this a shift in the balance of the car you're looking for a shift in the balance of the car because that's when you know you can get on the gas right but that's assuming you're on the right line which is you know getting down you know almost down almost down to like the like a quarter car off of off of the uh, the white liner so it's right around if you're going at the right entry speed right around where you get that shift where you can get on the gas but anyways so this guy he goes in too hot he doesn't make the line he he then feels a shift in the car and gets on the gas but because he's too high right he's in the middle he's in the he's not low he's in the mid right and the grip is just not there in that mid to high part of Dover, especially on the exit of three and four. So he's trying to use the same amount of power he's doing and visually it looks like you're holding. But the whole time he's actually sliding up the track and he doesn't realize it, right? Because visually as you're turning in, depending on where you're looking, it'll look like you're actually holding the line. In reality, you're sliding up the track the entire time. And normally that works in Dover because you start off lower and you slide out and you have enough space by the time you get to the end, right? But because he started that slide out, right, and, and so, so that's exactly what happened. So he starts, he comes in too hot, he gets on the gas when he feels a shift, but he's not in the right position because he came in too hot. He starts to slide up, doesn't realize he's sliding up, and then when the, when, when the wall is coming to get him, instead of letting off the gas, taking his wall rub, and then getting back on the gas where he would have been fine, he doesn't lift. He doesn't lift, so when the corner closes up on him, he hits it at about a 30 degree angle, bounces off. You could still save it at that point if you lift. Again, he doesn't lift. He stays on the on the on the on the gas and tries to save save the uh, save the slide. And because he saves on the gas, he rockets into the inf the the inside wall, bounces completely off, and I had nowhere to go. So he bounced off the inside wall, came back across the track, bounced off the top of the wall, and I basically T-boned him. 30 minutes of repair. That was my Dover race. That was my Dover race pretty much done. And the thing is with the trucks, I'm doing the entire season beginning to end. Nice. Congrats on the win. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm rated about 13 to 14. I think I've been like up to 1500 in the ovals. Um, I'm definitely faster than that. I've been recovering a lot of I rating because Oh, Daytona was terrible for me. I qualified third. Yeah, I yeah. Well, well, Dega I lost a little bit, but Dega wasn't too bad. Uh, Daytona I qualified third. Uh, was in like of the four splits. I think I was in second split, and like just I had some guy just basically like drive through me, uh, turn me, and. They, I, I was done. I was basically done. They basically went. So so what happened was they, they tried to go three wide on like lap two, which is freaking stupid because it's freaking Dega. 
or not Dega because it's freaking Daytona. Daytona, like like in Dega, you can run three wide. It's not smart, but you can run three wide. Dega has a little bit more room than Daytona. Daytona, you can run three wide, but it's really risky. So why are you going three wide on lap two? But yeah, they went three wide on lap two. Uh, the middle lane, the middle lane, a guy from the top lane got a bump, got a bump, got a run, was gonna hit the guy up, you know, in front of him. As as we were coming out of uh, as we were coming out of I think four, and so he shifted down to the mid lane, and but still had the run and just drove through me. He didn't lift. He just drove through me, turned me, and that was that. And then, to top it off, so then I get my car repaired. Uh, we're back out there. We're trying to you know we're trying to you know make up three or four laps. Uh, we're running our line, and my crew chief crashed. So I was getting no spotter calls, and so I didn't realize that the leaders were coming up on me. And in fairness, I held my line. I didn't move from my line, but I didn't realize the leaders were coming up on me. And the leaders, one of the leaders, instead of like pushing outside because the outside line gave him space, instead of pushing outside, he tried to pass me on the apron, got loose, and then turned into me. And then that spun me out and, and, and damaged me even worse. And that was like another like 16 minutes of, uh, of damage. Um, I do a little bit of both. I do, so so I'll tell you what my current schedule is. My current schedule is trucks on Monday, ARCA on Wednesday, Friday we do IMSA. So we do the uh, the AMG GT3 in IMSA. Um, and Sundays we were doing a league. We were in a league on Sundays. I don't know if I'm gonna pick up that league again because it's a lot, it's a, it's a lot of effort to do that many days. Um, but what I'd like to do is I, I wanna, I'm probably gonna pick up the, um, I, I don't know I don't and then I do Nurbert I do endurance races whenever there's available like the Nurbert ring challenge I do the solo four hours of Nurbert ring challenge in the GT3 as well so that's another thing I do and then Saturdays we build airplanes so we're building an airplane and that's our Saturday streamer Saturday stream is typically building an airplane unless I'm out of town sometimes it's interesting sometimes it's very boring it really depends on the part I'm working on uh, a lot of it is repetitive, but you know, sometimes it's cool, right? Like right now we're working on a wing and unfortunately last Saturday's stream was pretty boring uh, because we were working on the landing light and all the work in the landing light is inside the wing. There's really not much to show um, other than when we turn on the light. But, and then on our off day, Thursdays our viewer request day. So we usually play like survival games or something else with like the mods and, and any subscribers. And then uh, we do Escape from Tarkov like on off nights and random days. Um, but I'm thinking of doing Gen 4 because of their longer races uh, next season instead of the Arca doing the Gen 4 fixed. Um, but yeah, the Jimmy Johnson Spider Pack is pretty good. I, I, I have messed around with it, but because I do road as well, I kind of like to just keep it consistent. Um... But yeah, that that was my Dover race. My Dover race was was a was a shit show. Um, that you know what? That's that's not bad. What else do you race? I think I use an Australian girl for uh, for my spotter. Chief is obviously Chief, but I use an Australian girl for my spotter, if I remember. Yeah, so I'm contemplating, I'm contemplating what series is we're gonna do with season two. Uh, if you like this, the Skippy, no, I, I like the Skippy, but it's kind of died out with a lot of the stuff they've added. With like the, with the, with the, and then now with the, the with the uh, Formula Ford, the the 1600, the FF 1600 that they can't call it Formula Ford, so so they just call it the FF 1600. I think that takes away from the Skippy, and that also takes away from the um, that also takes away from the um, uh, what's that other car? Uh, the Spec Ford Racer. Yeah, I'm at a point now where I have most of the ovals. Yeah, V the V hurt the Skippy too. The V definitely hurt the Skippy. Um, so look at all. So this is their. Look at all the tracks I have. 
mostly ovals. I, I've bought most of the ovals at this point, so um, kind of now what I've been doing is slowly adding uh, road courses. Um, but on the roads, on the roadside, what really interests me is the endurance race, the endurance tracks. Um, I still have a lot of lot of tracks to buy, but I don't have like none of the dirt tracks. So, so oval wise, right? I've got a bunch of the legacy stuff, twin rig. I don't know if that really counts as an oval. Um, I gotta buy Wilkesboro because there's a Wilkesboro race coming up soon. Um, but if you look at that compared to road, right, there's way more road courses to, to purchase. And then, yeah, I don't, dirt ovals I don't really have, dirt road I don't really have a lot, but those are, a lot of those are shared anyways. So. Yeah, I've got to buy Sonoma, and then I've got to buy a North, Wil North Wilkesboro. Um, let's look at the series list. These are all, these are the current series I'm running. I'm not really running the GT3 right now. I'm running just the IMSA. Um, and then I want to do the CSS, but um, the problem with CSS is I don't have the cars for CSS, and I don't feel like buying the, uh, the CSS car. European, or sorry, the European Sprint, right? Like, none of these cars interest me other than the Hybrid or the Delara, and I'm not ready to make the step up to, to the, uh, to the prototypes. Yeah, it's, it's expensive. It's expensive. It really is. Um, you know, but, I mean. You can't beat iRacing. That's the thing. Like compar comparatively, I've like to other sims. I will say that there are. Oh yeah, at least you're not in Europe where you have to pay VAT. But um. But yeah, the conversion kills you too. Um, see, like I own all the Arca tracks for this, this this season. ACC is good. Yeah, it's. And you know what? ACC's fourth feedback is better. Although I think I need to install um, IFBB or IRFBB. I need to reinstall that because my computer actually crashed and I had to reinstall everything on the computer and I haven't reconfigured um, IRFBB since then. Um, but what do you race on? What's your rig? Yeah, IRFBB is fantastic. Um, but I ha honestly, since my... Since Okay, so I've got a G923 in the back that I at some point I'm probably going to auction off with a uh, with a um, one of those uh, GT lights from uh, Next Level Racing, the foldable ones. There's a lot of upgrades to the G920 that you can do, but honestly, like the biggest the biggest the biggest issue with the 920 is is the brakes. The wheel is perfectly acceptable. Yeah, yeah, pedals exactly. Um, It, it's hard for me to recommend pedals. If you're gonna go just pure load cell, I think the the best value for the buck is probably the uh, the uh, the sprints. The sprints are probably the best value for the pedal. I think if you're gonna spend a little bit of money, if you're not gonna spend a ridiculous amount of money, but you're gonna spend a little bit of money, I think my personal favorite, which is what I went with, is the the uh, Sim Magic P two thousands. They just have a really, really good pedal feel. They are load cell pedals. Honestly, the biggest problem with Fanatec is you can't even get the, uh, you can't even, they never in stock. Even, even like, they're, you're never in, in stock. Um, they're impossible to like ever get in stock. The one thing I will recommend from Fanatec is if you're gonna upgrade your shifter, and you do different types of raining racing yeah that's what i have i have an r9 um i have an r9 so so my sim rig is an r9 i've got the uh, cs wheel because i didn't feel like because i wanted to do oval i felt like the cs wheel was a better option and then i got the uh the the gt wheel the gt essentially what is a gt3 wheel the one without the screen not the frs but the other one with an r9 
Um, I think the R9 is is has enough enough torque to be sufficient. Um, the jump in price is hard to justify the R16, uh, especially for like your initial upgrade. Because when you upgrade to a to a to a to a base like that, you need to get a rig as well. Um, I will say the best deal I've found on a rig uh, is Sim, from Sim Motion. The chair is a little crap. No, the cheap most the cheapest Moza base is five newton meters. Then they have a nine newton meter, a sixteen, and a twenty one. So the one I use currently is the nine nine newton meter, but the cheapest one is a uh, is a five. I think the nine is is just right. It's enough. It's enough force where you have more than enough feedback from the car and you're not fighting the wheel. I want a stronger wheel because I want a sim. I want a stronger wheel because I want a sim real life feel. And I may do indie, some, some indie car at some point, transition to some of the indie car oval stuff. And that's no power steering. You know, it's, it's, it's a workout, right? So. So I'm contemplating, you know, upgrading at some point to the to the R21, um, because the difference in price between the R16 and the, and the R21 isn't that big, compare comparatively from the R9 to the R R16. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That that is true, and you and, and, and it gives you a little bit of drag too. Um, so it's not it's not a bad wheel. Like the wheel itself on the 920 is not bad. It's nowhere near a direct drive wheel, but it's not bad. I would not. If you're gonna go Moza, I would get at least the R9. I think the R5 is a hair underpowered. Yeah, I have to set up IRFBB. I honestly have enough inputs on the wheels and stuff where I don't think I need I need a uh, I need VJoy. No, it's not. It's not as big as a wheel, but but here's the thing. One of the biggest one of the biggest like nice things about ACC versus especially well, I mean, well, specifically for road, but ACC versus i racing is the feedback you get through the wheel for slides is way better. Is way better. I've got my I got my R9 fairly tuned like on a lot of the settings. It's got a really good feel, but just the the normal setup like force feedback like curves that you get yeah, the, the, the force feedback on ACC is so amazing. It's like, it, it really is amazing. Um, although I will say one of the best additions I ever did to my sim rig, by far, is the um, the uh, the butt kicker. The butt kicker, I can't say enough good things about that. Like the, and, and, and the reason it's so, so good is because I do VR, the extra immersion you get from like Feeling the car, feeling the engine, feeling the clunk of the shifts. It's just, it, it makes up so much. Yeah, and that's the thing. If you go force feedback, you're going to have to get a rig. And that's why I say it's hard to justify a lot a lot of money. And even for like good, good high quality pedals, you're going to need a rig, right? Because you need the rigidity. Now, you can make a cheap rig out of like two by fours and stuff, right? But you lose a lot of adjustability and other things, right? So speaking of rigs, this is the cheapest, the, the, the best overall quality and, and, uh, and here, this is US dash sim motion, US sim motion, uh, US sim motion. I can't find, let me just, here we go. Sim dash motion. Yeah. US dot sim dash motion. This is the cheapest North American rig I've found. Okay, they have an in-house rig. The chair is shit. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, this seat actually looks kind of nice, but like the, the chair that comes with the, if you order the chair, the GT2 chair, it's not bad, it's just not that comfortable. Um, I got it because it was leather, but I honestly, I, I wish I would have gotten the, uh, the GT1 seat because I like the angle on this GT seat a little bit better. But you're probably better off replacing this long term with a different chair. But this, but I mean, if you have a car car chair that you can use or something else. But this rig right here, six ninety nine. It's a P one X clone. Six ninety nine for a P one X clone. It's the base is one hundred and sixty millimeters, right? 
a lot of the you can get a lot of other rigs a lot cheaper but they're they're for example 80 millimeters right the rigidity of this rig you cannot beat how rigid this rig is I, and, and that's one of the reasons I got it because oh, and in fairness I overbought this rig with the intention of I want to make this into a motion platform at some point right because you can easily, if you're not going to make it into a motion platform, you can easily go with an 80 millimeter instead of a 160. But I wanted the rigidity because I know I'm going to do a motion platform. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to set up a motion, not a D box because that's too expensive. But there's a, uh, um, where is? is there is a there is I don't think it's this one we'll look at this one but I don't think it's this one gotta hate all the white no it's definitely not that one Sorry, I'm doing a little bit of Google searching. I'm trying to find... Um, the, here we go, SFX, there, that's what it was. Uh, it's SFX, SFX. Yeah. Where are there, they have a website. Um, Let's, let's get rid of the 2000. Let's just do SFX motion platform. Uh, here we go. Open SFX, that's what I was looking for. But there's, there is a, uh, yep. This is basically a do it yourself uh, motion platform. There is a company that they're German. There is a company that does a knockoff of this. Um, so you can basically buy it pretty much with all the 3D printed and everything else and without having to buy this. But they basically have 3D printing like guides for you to do a... Uh... Yeah, an old car chair is honestly the best. An old sparkle chair would be amazing. Trying. I really should be using Google, not Bing, but. Should have bookmarked it to be honest with you. So what I I wish I wish I really wish that it wasn't four grand for the traction control. Let's look at this. Yeah, yes, but here's the trade-off to this. This is not a profile rig, right? So you lose a lot, a lot of customizability by not having a profile rig. That's the trade-off, right? The sim motion chassis is, is, is 549 without a chair. With, you know, without a chair, but it's a profile rig. So everything is adjustable. 
that's the thing. It's a trade-off. It's the 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 amount of adjustability you lose with like a tube rig or a or or one of these is is that's that's kind of the trade off right there there's a huge amount of of uh, adjustability um from going with a profile rig it looks like this is the same bolster chair that's not that comfortable that uh sim motion uses so, um, but yeah, I I would recommend if you buy either of these rigs, buy them without a chair, then just add the chair to it. Um, buy a, a a car chair if you can get it. But um, but yeah, I I wouldn't. If you're gonna spend the mo the the money on a rig, I would definitely get a. I would get a a rig like this. That's a profile rig. I like I said, I bought the 160 because I want to turn it long term, turn it into a motion rig. And so since I want to turn it into a motion rig, I want the rigidity of the 160, right? Um, do you need a 160? No. You can easily use an 80 profile rig, right? Like this is an 80 profile rig. Uh, it's a lot less heavy. It takes up a lot less space. This rig is so heavy, so heavy. But I like that it's that heavy because for a motion rig, it's, ha it's very stiff, right? Um, I'm probably gonna eventually put a, a Sparkle chair in it and change the seating position. I'm gonna make it probably a GT seating position because honestly, even the NASCARs have gone to a more GT seating position and they're really bolstered. Uh, not like back in the day where they were more upright. I'm very I'm very natural car seating position, which I, I wanna update, but I need to get a different chair for that because my chair currently isn't, isn't good for that. So I'm probably gonna put some, I'll probably pick up a used Sparkle or something, right? Um, let's find a um pt diy um, um sim rig let me see if i can find i'm trying to find a particular i'm trying to find a, I, I should do this in google because bing it, bing looks for context Bing is good if you give it like full sentences, but if you're looking for keyword searches, use Google. And we don't want you to. Let's check these guys out. Yeah, D-Box is ridiculous. Yeah, PT Actuators, that's what it is. PT Actuators is still expensive, but I think it's a little more reasonable. Uh, but you could do the SFX100 and source the parts your, on your own. Uh, but the PT Actuators is actually a really nice. We'll see if we can, if we can find this. Um, Let's. There we go. Is this it? No, this wasn't it. There was somebody who was a little bit cheaper than this. Uh, where were we? It's actually not bad for because this gives you a whole platform too. So that's actually kind of nice. Is it, is it this? No, it's not this one. This wasn't it. Yeah, no, this wasn't it. Unless maybe PT actuators redid the rig.
The price actually looks roughly right. Um, I mean, this is—I mean, this is super expensive, right? Um, and it's not. And here's the thing about motion: is it'll never, it won't simulate the g-forces. The um, what I am contemplating starting with is the belt tensioner. Let's do Google. This is essentially turned into a just chatting, but. Uh, Let's look at the products here on PT actuators. I think they might have redone their. Uh, I think they might have redone their. Uh, their web page. No, I don't. Yeah, no, that actually. That actually, yeah, no, this isn't what I was looking at. The one I was looking at used a single motor to tension the, uh, to pull tension on the, um, the one I was talking about used the, uh, a single motor to, to put tension on the, uh, on the belt. So it's not, it's not PT actuators, but it's, it's something similar. Yeah. Let's go back to Google. Let me see if I can find the, the company I was looking because they were actually very reasonable. So anyways, going back to the, uh, going back to the, um, the P2000 pedals. I really like the P2000 pedals from a feel perspective and you can really tune them correctly. I got the 200, the 200 kilogram load cell. Um, and then I have the lightest string. I have the lightest spring with the heaviest spring. And because it uses, it uses a hydraulic actuator. It uses a hydraulic actuator. Uh, to drive a spring stack so you use fluid to the, the what you press on the pedal is fluid but it drives against a spring stack that then uh, compresses a load cell so so the pedal is with the lightest spring and the heaviest spring you get a really nice like a really nice about like 60 percent like 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 60 percent or so like uh, like feedback so it's like it's basically like you have a little bit of uptake because I gave it a little bit of space, like I didn't, I didn't put a lot of, I didn't put any preload on the on the spring stack, so it actually has just a hair of gap, so I can rest my foot on the pedal without putting any load on the load cell, almost like a dead zone. And then the light spring is basically like an initial stage, and then you hit like the heavy part uh, of the brake pedal, like 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 a real brake pedal, where you get a, you know, you start to drag the pedal, and then eventually you get where you got the meat on, and so you can really fluctuate around that bite point. Um, which is really nice. Yeah, they're a little expensive, but they're cheaper than like like for for high end. They're, I would consider the P two thousand a a the top of the the mid range, and the bottom of the high range. Um, yeah, let me show you the P two thousand. They're really nice pedals, honestly. Here, this is the P2, this is with a bunch of accessories. So since I have a nice rig, I don't have this this carbon fiber plate. I don't have this this pedal stop, um, but but I have the three pedal set with the. Uh, I wish they just had pictures of the damn thing. More pictures and oh, actually they do. Okay, oh no, that's just yeah. So you can mount the spring stack vertically, or you can mount it horizontally. I have it mounted horizontally. Um, let me, I think they actually sell, these guys actually sell the uh, Sim Magic pedals, so. There's probably better pictures here, yeah. 
So here's the pedal stack. It comes with a nice base, base plate for you to mount it to your rig. It's super adjustable on where you can put it forward, and, uh, left and right and forward and back. Um, I went with a three pedal set. The clutch has a really nice like transition point and then you can basically configure with the curves. You can make that transition point basically fall right on like the, you know, the, 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 the nice part of the, the conversion. Um, so I got the three pedal 200 kilogram. They're expensive. This is US dollars. So Canadian is probably gonna be more expensive. But the feel on these pedals is amazing. And to give you an idea, and I mean, they're super well machined. They have plastic bushings between like all the metal sleeving, stop screws on, on, on like the stack. Uh, you have a dampener on the gas pedal, so it gives it like a more, a, a more rigid feel. Um, right, and so here's the, the spring stack I was talking about, right? So you can set preload with this guy here, and it has a stop screw. Then you can then you can pick whatever combination. It comes with like like uh, six different springs for you to put a combination of the springs here, and then it has a load cell with uh, that you put at the top of the stack there with a wire. Uh, so you read the load cell, but it's a fluid, it's a fluid piston that drives a, a piston in here that then pushes against these springs. Um, and then the clutch has a very nice. The clutch has a very nice. Um, I wish I could show this is. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, that's the two pedal set. But the yeah, there's the fluid reservoir, and they've upgraded. It looks like they've upgraded that fluid reservoir. All right, man. Have a good time at the race. Uh, but these are fully load cells, so I I love these pedals. I will say the one disadvantage to them is that they're only 14 bit. They're not 16 bit on the pedal position, so you get only got uh, 4,096 positions as opposed to um, 65,000 positions. But but the you can't beat the feel. Now that's fair. That's fair. Um, that's fair, right? I I personally I bought these pedals because I wanted to buy pedals. Once I I decided I was going to upgrade. Because I bought my, my, my cheap sim rig and I really wanted to upgrade so bad, I only wanted to upgrade once. So I'm very happy with my, I'm very happy with everything I purchased for the sim rig with the exception of, I wish I would have gotten a stronger wheelbase, but I couldn't afford it at the time. Uh, so I spent most of my money on these pedals. Um, and then the one thing I will say from Fanatec that, that I recommend above anything else, if you're going to race both, uh, uh, stock cars and like street cars is the Fanatec shifter is by far the best shifter for convenience of shifting between sequential and H pattern and and the sequential has a decent feel it's not great it's a little bit sloppy compared to most sequentials but you can switch on the fly super easy and it just feels super good Anyways, I'm gonna end the stream here too because I gotta get some bed, some some sleep. Uh, good luck with your races. Have fun. Thank you for the follow, and uh, hopefully I'll see you uh, throughout the week or next week. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day and your races.